So if you thought that Vlad would be camping and not doing some kind of astronomy, obviously you'd be wrong, right? Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. And as you can see, I'm doing a little bit of camping out here. Um, you know, the day is kind of long though. And there was actually a request for me to do a video on telescopes that are the best for uh, planetary observing. I'm posting them the name of the user that requested that. So, you know, thanks for the suggestion. And, you know, if, if you guys do have any videos for suggestions, um, I'd be happy to do them if, you know, if I kind of have the knowledge of that. But anyway, for those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com. Um, and then, of course, this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, just over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And uh, that's why I think, you know, overall I've got a, you know, I think, you know, pretty decent feel for, you know, what makes a good planetary telescope just because I've had, you know, so many of them. Alright, so let's get to the topic of the video planetary telescope. So what makes a good planetary telescope? Um, so before we even get into the telescope aspect, there's one thing that I really kind of wanted to cover. Um, and that is, you know, it doesn't matter how great of a telescope you have, what the design of the telescope is, whether it's, you know, a refractor, a daub, or an SCT, or, you know, whatever other, you know, kind of more exotic designs. If the, if the scene in your, uh, you know, on that particular night do not support, you know, whatever type of telescope you have, it doesn't matter how good the optics are, okay, it's, you're not going to get good images of plants. Um, the reason for that is pretty simple. So usually when you're doing planetary, you're using powers of, you know, I'd say a minimum of about 120x uh, and hopefully higher than that. Like, you know, and, and I live here in the Northwest where, you know, usually typically I could, you know, get away with doing around 200x on the planets. Uh, but if, you know, on a particular night, if the scene's not good enough, it doesn't matter how great of a telescope I have or how bad of a telescope I have, you know, you're just really not going to be able to pull out too much details. Uh, the analogy that I, you know, hear pretty often about, you know, bad scene or like, you know, looking at the planets or let's say the moon in bad scene, it's kind of like looking through water, which is very true. I mean, you know, you can just kind of see every the whole image is kind of boiling over it's wavy so yeah so if the scene is not good the telescope really doesn't matter so i just wanted to get that out of the way is you do have to have a good scene okay so let's assume though you know you are out on the night of you know pretty good scene to where you could use powers of you know let's say uh, uh, around 200x okay and hopefully even higher but let's say around 200x because at 200x you know the planets will start to look pretty big like saturn's gonna look pretty big jupiter's gonna look pretty big uh, mars when it's in the opposition is gonna look pretty big venus and mars you know like the they're all gonna you know display like most of the details that they have to display at 200x. So let's say the scene is good. So um, at that point, what you know telescope would you know kind of like I prefer? Well, again, it kind of depends. So what do I mean by that? So if I have a very short period of time to observe, right? I'm always probably going to grab one of my refractors. This is a little two inch. I just brought this with me, you know, because you know I can't go like somewhere without some astro gear. Come on now, right? <laughs> So anyway, I, you know, as you saw me doing, I did like a little bit of solar projection. I don't know if the sunspots are gonna show up, but they, you know, like in, in real life, I could actually sunspots with this. And, uh, you know, hopefully at night, there's a little bit of clearing here in the trees. If it's not cloudy, you know, I'll do a little bit of observing. But anyhow, um, with uh, refractors, I would say if you have at least a four inch Apple refractor, right? Um, you can see a lot of what the planets have to show on, you know, on most nights of scene. Unless you live in an area that just always has really good scene, then you probably want a bigger telescope. But yeah, four or five inch Apo, if I don't have too much time to observe, that's my scope of choice. The reason for that is because they don't really have too much cool down time. I mean, you bring it out, it already shows you sharp images, you're basically good to go. Now, let's say that you actually do have, um, more time to observe let's say you have an hour or something like that where you could plan ahead uh typically if the night does support you know powers of like 200x and above right a bigger scope will show you more 
as long as it has, you know, you know that it has pretty good optics and that it is actually collimated. There's a lot of people that I know, you know, that I've met like over the years, you know, they'll have an SCT and they've never collimated. So if you're not comfortable with collimating your SCT, if it's not in collimation, it might not show you, you know, as much as even like a three or four inch Apple will, you know, if the optics are just not aligned on it. But if they are aligned, if you know that you've got a good sample of an SCT, like I um, actually recently, a couple of, um, well, this is about a week ago, I was doing some observing of, uh, of Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter in particular in this you know, particular example. Um, I had my Takahashi FS128 out, which is you know, about as good of a 5-inch apple as you could get in the doublet. Um, I was looking at Saturn, at Jupiter with it, right? And uh, Jupiter was high enough to clear the walls of my uh, observatory. So um, after I observed, you know, with the FS120A, I went and I uh, started observing with the Mi 12-inch SCT that I have. That is in collimation and has great optics. Also, the key thing is that it's in an observatory outside already. So it's totally, you know, equalized to the environment. And man, I mean, there's just really no contest. I mean, the 12 inch just brought in way more detail. Uh, very specifically, there was this really low contrast festoon, like a really white beige one that the FS128, like I just had no hints of it like at all. Like I didn't know that it existed. And the 12 inch was pretty, you know, pretty readily seen. And all the details that I saw in the um, FS128 were just kind of clear and, you know, just easier to observe in the, uh, in the 12 inch. Uh, uh, SCT. All right, so what about the other telescope design? So I talked about refractors, I talked about SCTs. Um, you know, like a daub is, it's basically kind of falls into the same camp as an SCT. If the optics are collimated, if you have a long enough of a time to where, you know, you can bring it out, let it cool down, you know, same thing applies. You know, if, if you've got good optics, if the signal is supported, you will see more, you know, in a, in a larger daub compared to like a smaller refractor. So overall, I'd say that, you know, if you have um, a short amount of time to observe, right? I'd probably do something that's a refractor, you know, in the four to five inch size. If you have longer times to observe, or you could, if you could plan ahead and bring out like your SCT or your DAB or a Mac. A Mac, they take even longer to cool down because that front uh, uh, corrector plate on them is thicker. It's a thicker glass than SCTs. Um, but yeah, you know, Mac, they're, you know, they're very good for the plants as well. As, again, as long as, you know, they're cooled down, they usually don't have as many collimation issues. Usually collimation is a lot more stable on the Mac, uh, but the cool down is a killer on them. I mean, if you have like a six or seven inch Mac, I mean, man, like the cool down on them can be like, you know, an hour to two hours. So if you can plan ahead, you know, bring it out, let it cool down or heat up, you know, just uh, equal as to the outside temperatures. They're great, great scopes, and chances are they will show you, you know, more than a smaller refractor. Uh, if you're just kind of constrained and, you, you know, like on time and, you know, you don't have too much time to observe, then, yeah, refractor is really the way to go. So, yeah, hopefully you guys found this topic interesting. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. See you guys in the next video. Bye.